On behalf of County Manager Diario and the Mecklenburg County Commissioners, welcome to the FY25 Community Service Grant Program Information Session. We are so glad to have you here. Uh, and like I said, to see so much interest in helping the county further the board's goals. Uh, my name is Lauren Tayara. I know I've come up here multiple times already, uh, but never introduced myself. I'm Lauren Tayara. I'm a senior management and budget analyst for uh, the county manager's office, and I'm also the budget lead for the CSG program. I'm joined by the rest of the CSG team, that's what we call ourselves, uh, who will introduce themselves now. Hey you have to uh, come to the speech. microphone. Hello everyone, uh, and everyone in the overflow rooms, thank you all for coming today. Uh, my name is Gage Tillman. I am the performance lead for the community service grant program. Hello everyone, my name is Laura McBride and I am also on the budget side of the CSG program. Good morning everyone. I think I met many of you in the parking lot earlier. Uh, my name is Jamie Matteo and I'm the newest uh, strategy and planning analyst with SPE. Right, we also have a budget intern who has been helping our our uh, uh, program this uh, month. Um, okay, you will receive everybody's emails at the end of this presentation, so don't worry about any of that. Um, let me start with some housekeeping. This session is being recorded. Uh, it will be available on the county CSG website, um, and this presentation will also be available in PDF format if you need to go back and rewatch it or have any questions. Um, in addition to the recording, we'll send out the slides from today and some other important links. If you have any questions during the session, uh, we ask that you wait until the end of the presentation. There is a slide in the middle, but because there's so many people and we have multiple rooms at this point, we ask that you wait until the end. Um, and if your questions are specific to your organization, you might want to reach out directly to us afterwards. Okay. These are the topics we'll cover today. We will review the purpose of the CSG program, process and timeline, eligibility and reporting requirements, our sunset policy, and application submission, including the updated performance and budget templates. Um, to that note, there are a couple of changes since last year, so we will be pointing those out as we go along. Um, and then we'll have questions at the end. So the, com the Community Service Grants Program is an opportunity for Mecklenburg County to partner with nonprofit organizations to help meet the needs of our community. As you can see from this word cloud, our CSG, CSG programs serve multiple purposes. In FY25 alone, 16 providers were selected that served a variety of residents across the entirety of our community. Here's a review of the full process. We start out here at the information session today. I have a pointer right here. Um, you will have the opportunity to apply online starting today and ending November 13th. From that point, all applications will be reviewed by a panel and recommended programs will go into the budget that gets pre presented to the board in May. You will be notified of all of the selected programs that will appear in the recommended budget. Again, you will receive an email of all of the programs, whether you received the CSG grant or not. Programs that receive funding in the adopted budget will be invited to an ori orientation session in July. Now that we've heard about the purpose and process, let's look at eligibility and re reporting requirements. Thanks, Lauren. So in this section, Lauren and I will overview the different criteria that we have um, and the expectations that we hold for CSG applicants. 
Our community service grant uh, maintains seven eligibility criteria for organizations. The first eligibility criteria is applicants must serve residents of Mecklenburg County uh, through the specific program that you list in your application. Second, applicants must be designated 501c3 charitable organizations um, designated through the IRS. You can check your status using the link that we've provided here, and we will send these slides out after this presentation. Number three, applicants uh, must have submitted a recent audited financial statements to the county. Number four, applicants must submit a diversified workforce policy. An example of this would be an equal employment opportunity policy. Number five, applicants must be a member of a professional organization that supports their sustainability efforts. An example of this would be the North Carolina Center for Nonprofits. Or this could include national to state to local relationships amongst multi-leveled organizations. Number six, applicants must be categorized as active by the North Carolina Secretary of State. We've also provided a link where you can check your active status as well. Lastly, applicants must clearly contribute to one or more of our county's four strategic goal areas. So talking about our strategic goal areas, our community service grant funding is categorized um, by these um, strategic goals that you see on the screen here. The first goal, connected community, seeks to foster access to physical, social, and informational resources and amenities for all residents in the Mecklenburg County community. The second goal area, economic opportunities, seeks to provide economic opportunities for all by enhancing access to and support for individuals and businesses. Goal area number three, healthy communities, seeks to have a community where all people can thrive, be well, and live healthily. And then our last goal area, safe community, seeks to have a community that embraces uh, safety and justice for all and is responsive to the needs of both justice-involved and non-justice-involved individuals. In addition to these eligibility criteria, successful CSG applicants have typically shared some common characteristics. First, successful applicants have usually been established organizations and their programs have held um, existing service populations. Second, successful applicants have shown a history of meeting established service targets. Third, past grantees have had a diversified, uh, sustainable funding model wherein county funding does not make up 100% of their program budget. And then lastly, past grantees have typically expressed an intention to use our CSG funding to help increase or expand their existing services. On the next slide, Lauren will help walk you through our program's audit requirement. This is probably one of the biggest questions we get during the process. It is a requirement of the county uh, to have an audited financial statement. It must be prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles and be audited by an independent CPA. The CPA must issue a clean, unqualified opinion. Usually that's written in the financial statement. The organization must include the balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows. The year end date for the audit must be no more than 12 months prior to the beginning of the contract term. April 1st, 2023 is the cutoff for the new for the fiscal year um, for this year's program. Uh, once we've received the audit, the county's finance department will evaluate the financial statements to make sure number one, there is sufficient cash to cover your operations that you aren't operating on debt, 
and your funding dependence, just to name a few. Ultimately, finance will recommend that the county should or should not enter into an agreement with the organization. FY23 audited financial statements are due by Monday, April 1st, 2024. Sunset policy. Programs, and let me be clear, programs, not organizations, that are awarded funding for three consecutive fiscal years, so for us that would be 22 through 24, will be sunset from the CSG program. Organizations with sunset programs may apply for consider consideration as a vendor for FY24 using our new vendor application. It was new last year. Uh, you'll see a link for that coming up, and I'll also email that out to the eligible organizations. Uh, those organizations are able to apply with a different program as long as they can uh, show the difference from the one that was sunset. Uh, sunset programs that are not selected to become a vendor must wait three consecutive fiscal years to apply for CSG funding again. All right. This is the questions that we're not going to do. <laughs> and then we'll head into um, the application section that Laura will go over with you. Good morning again. So what you see here are two links to our applications. Most of you are gonna be using this CSG application link here. These are also available on our website in case you need them. This vendor application link right here, you will use if Lauren lets you know that that's where you're going. But most of you are gonna be right here um, a note, we use Amplifund as our application platform. If you have tech problems while you're filling out the application, if you have any kind of technological issues, um, there will be links in the application for you to contact them directly. If you have questions about the application itself, about the content of the questions, you'll reach out to one of our team. So this is gonna be the landing page you're gonna to get to at first. And when you get here, you're gonna to go to this apply button up at the top. You click that, it's gonna take you to a login page. Most of you, I imagine, will need to register. So you'll go here and register. That's then gonna bring you to this page. This is the opportunity details page. This just provides a little bit more information about eligible organizations, about the award, and about the program. Then you're gonna go to this page. This is the project information page. This is where you're gonna put in your information. So your application name is gonna be the name of the program that you are applying with. Then your award requested. You're gonna put in your primary contact information. This is gonna be the person that if we have questions, we're gonna reach out to. Important note, you must click this mark as complete right here before you hit save and continue. Once you've hit mark as complete, you can hit save and continue. That's gonna take you to this page. What you're gonna note up here is if you have done that mark as complete and it's registered it, this right up here will have a check mark. You'll have these two check marks right here. Now these four links are going to be linked. They don't necessarily look like it right here, but they will be linked. And you're gonna click into each one of these. These are the different program forms. And again, you're gonna hit this save and continue. So this first one is our proposal cover sheet. First thing you're gonna see is the service or program name and your organization name. You're gonna put in your EIN, your number of years as a 501c3 and the total funds requested. Then you're gonna put in your director's contact name. This might be the same as your primary contact, it might not. And again, your marking complete. 
The second page you're going to get to is your required documents page. This is where you're going to be able to upload that audit that Lauren mentioned. Um, we're also going to ask you to attest right here in this statement um, that you have an audit prepared for submission or you will be able to provide one by the deadline of April 1st. We're asking you to affirm that you understand that you, if the applicant organization is not able to provide an audit, we will not be able to enter into, enter into a contract. And you'll just select, yes, I have an audit, or I will be able to provide one, or no, I will not be able to provide an audit. If you do have that audit on hand, you can upload it here. You do not have to if you don't have it just yet. Then you're going to upload these other documents that Gage was mentioning earlier. Your third page is your program narrative. This is where you're going to talk about the program with which you are applying. You're going to say the program history, so the number of years that the program, not the organization, has been operating, if you are a current recipient of CSG funds, um, and if your organization has a program that has been sunset. So if you have had a program called Bags for Kids, and that program has been sunset and you are applying with a different program, you'll explain right here how those two programs are different. Then you'll get into your problem statement. So this is what your program does and the specific community need that you pr are proposing to address. Um, you can provide and cite any research or data that you have in any of these questions, the more detail and data that you can provide, the better it is for us to be able to get a good understanding of what your program is doing. Same thing for your target population and service geography. This is the characteristics of your target population, the location where your services will be provided, and how members of your target population are selected for your program. You're also going to note the number of individuals and households that are being served by this program using CSG funds only. So if there are going to be 20 additional participants that you are looking to serve with this funding, that's what you'll note there. Your service delivery strategy is your strategy for your program, including your staff, your key activities, and any collaborations or partnerships that are going to be used to address your, pro your problem. Again, we note here, the more detail that you can give us to help us understand the work that you're doing, the better. You're also going to note your proposed service results. So we're going to have this performance template that Gage is going to talk to you about here in just a second. But in addition to that, we're asking that you describe your methods for data collecting and tracking. And I'm going to let Gage talk about the performance template. Fantastic. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so it's going to be the fun part, um, and I'm going to be as detailed as possible that I can be in a presentation. Um, so once you download your CSG performance template, which as Laura mentioned, you can do in Amplifon, you'll see a sheet uh, that looks like this. In this spreadsheet, you'll fill out information to help us understand uh, your, help us understand how your program has performed in the past. And if your program is selected for funding, we will use the information that you include here as a baseline to build the final performance measures for the eventual contract. A few things to note here while we're on this slide. Um, this spreadsheet is set up uh, by output measures and outcome measures. We'll get into what those are in a second. As you complete this spreadsheet, um, you should tell us the name of your measures, supply detailed calculation methodologies, uh, and fill in past targets for measures if you have used these in the past. For the result history, we only ask that you fill in results uh, back to fiscal year 22. If you do not have results that go back that far, please fill in the information in the years that you do have results for. You'll also notice uh, in the fiscal year 24, so if we're looking in the gold area right here, fiscal year 24, it has the letters YTD beside it. This stands for year to date. Since fiscal, 
fiscal year 24 is still in progress, we ask that you please supply the results that you may have available for this year, even though those results may still be in progress. For the fiscal year 25 target, which you'll see on the edge of your template, uh, this is the area where you will tell us what service target you anticipate to meet with the additional CSG funding if you receive it. Please be sure to include targets that are ambitious for your program, but that are also practically attainable. For ambitious, what we generally mean uh, is that your proposed targets should exceed any historical targets that you may have had in the past. For attainable, what we mean is that whatever targets you do set, you should be able to attain and record those targets at 100% of your capacity. Please be advised that we would that you will be held accountable for whatever targets you include if you are selected for funding. In the next few slides, I'll go deeper into the different components of our performance template. So first, as a general guide, uh, you should include measures that follow a uh, general logic model flow. What we're sharing on the screen here is a simple logic model that you can use uh, to test any measures Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Any measures that you want to include. Uh, this logic model flow begins with an identification of any resources available to you. These are known as inputs. You'll see that in the teal box there. Inputs are essential building blocks uh, that your program uses. These include things like staff, materials, and any funding that you may receive. Outputs are the, oh, um, after inputs, sorry, I got my notes mixed up. After inputs, you have activities. Activities are uh, the processes that you um, do using your inputs. So uh, the programmatic things that you do with your staff, with your materials, and with your uh, funding. After activities, outputs are the uh, products of those. Outputs basically identify how many of X thing that you are able to do through your activities. Using, um, if, we, if we use individual counseling sessions as an example of an activity uh, that you provide, an output of that, you could say that X number of clients completed a counseling session or a set of counseling sessions. Lastly, outcomes track how successful you were in meeting the intent of your activities. Outcomes are also known generally as impact. For example, if we intend that counseling sessions and activity uh, will help improve behavioral health assessment scores, an outcome that you could use um, could be the percent of clients who showed improvement in their behavioral health assessments after completion of counseling. Using the logic model as your guide, you will fill in these components on the performance template for your application. First, you'll have your output measures, then your outcome measures. You'll have calculation methodologies, performance history, and finally, you'll have your fiscal year 25 performance targets. As we just covered, your outputs should reflect what you're able to produce through your programmatic activities. Typically, outputs are set as the number of X thing that you do. So for example, we could have the number of meetings held, the number of vaccines administered, or even the number of meals served. Outcomes are again meant to track the impact of your activities and are typically set as the percent of intended X thing that you're doing. So you could have outcomes, for example, like the percent of clients that were placed in jobs, or the percent of students um, that increased their GPA. In all, we expect you to include six to eight measures in your performance template, around three to four unique output measures, and around three to four unique outcome measures. The calculation methodologies uh, that you'll include help tell the county um, how you will process the data for your measures. 
since outputs are typically expressed as the number of X thing that you do, the calculation methodologies uh, for these measures are typically expressed as counts. So for example, you could have the count of clients served as a calculation methodology for an output measure. Since outcome measures are typically expressed as percents, the methodologies for these will usually be expressed with a numerator and with a denominator. So for example, you could have a calculation that has the number of students who graduate, that would be your numerator, divided by the number of students that had participated in your program, that would be a denominator, and those create percentage results. Moving on to performance history, as noted earlier, we would like you to fill in any existing performance results that you have for any measures that you include in this template. The targets that you propose for fiscal year 25 should let us know how many of X thing that you intend to do, so that would be through your outputs, and what percentage impact you would attend to attain, and those will be through your outcomes. Just a quick note here on this slide, uh, you'll see two output measures that are already included in your performance template once you download it. We separate um, our CSG funding and non-CSG funding usually by how you categorize your funding. If your program uses distinct funding source buckets to fund certain staff activities, then we ask that you please fill out how many individuals uh, will be served through CSG dollars specifically. That will be the first output measure that's included. And then tell us how many individuals are served through your other funding sources. That will be the second output measure included. If your program does not distinguish which funding sources are used uh, to serve uh, certain staff or activities, then you can just fill out the first output measure. And if you have any questions about that later, you can certainly reach out. Um, if your program is funded, we will meet with you to discuss and refine uh, your proposed performance measures and targets. So just in case any of y'all are worried there. Once you're finished filling out your template, you filled in all your output measures, all your outcome measures, um, you've told us what your fiscal year 25 anticipated target should be, you will come back into Amplifund and choose the upload function, which will be right below where you downloaded your performance template. And then Amplifund will prompt you to upload that completed template back into the system. Next, we'll have Lauren come up and review the budget template with you. Gage and I compete for the, for the section that's the most fun. So I, I think budget is, but he'll say performance. Um, so the next part of this section is the budget proposal where you'll be asked to provide a description of how funds will be used to support the program. This question has expanded to include uh, details and reads as follows. This is new. In addition to completing the budget template below, please provide a description of how funds will be used to support the program. You should include specific information such as number of positions, position titles and salaries, the program supplies to be purchased, how clients will receive any direct assistance offered, and any other details relevant to your application. This information will be used to provide a complete understanding of how requested funds would be used and should be as thorough as possible. Also, please describe the future of the program if CSG funding is not awarded for FY25. And in the same way that you downloaded, completed, and attached a performance template, like Gage explained, you'll do the same with a budget template. So start by clicking here to download a copy. Clicking here. And just so you know, when you download a copy, you'll save it to your own computer as a desktop version, work in it, and then you'll re-upload it. I'm not sure if that was super clear. So this is what the budget template looks like. It is a little bit different from last year, so um, I'll explain that. Um, 
you will complete this document for the specific program that you're requesting funding for. You'll add your uh, organization name to the top, uh, your total organization budget, uh, your total program budget, and then you'll select your budget cycle over here on the side. This is a new part. Uh, there's now a drop down list at the top requesting you to select if your request is for funding uh, that will go towards an existing program, an expansion of an existing program, or a brand new program. Uh, I tried to make the tables a little easier to follow so you will only be typing in these white, white areas in the middle here. Okay. You will add your budget and actuals for fiscal year 23, the budget for FY24, and your budget proposal for next year. FY25 is split into total program cost versus county cost. The last two columns have formulas to autofill the dollar and percent change. So just so you understand, this total funding cost is how much your entire program is going to cost you. This county funding column is how much you are asking the county to provide and that breakdown. So we can see the exact breakdown of how county funds will be used in these categories. You will do that for direct and indirect costs. I'll go over uh, the difference in just a second. Those are the expenses here the expense categories right here. And here are the revenues. So this is basically answering the question, who else will be giving you funds for your program? And you'll also give the historical information on that as well. This section highlighted in yellow towards the bottom is sort of a way to do a checks and balance. So if any of these three cells appear red and say false, you will need to adjust your numbers in your revenue or expense sections. Please don't change these con conditional cells. Um, and just a note, this form will not work in Google Documents, so you'll have to be your own checks and balances. <laughs> um, so let me explain those a little bit better. The easiest to understand uh, that is that you must show a balanced budget. So we are required to know the information, the general statute. A balanced budget is revenues and expenses match. There's no difference in between the two numbers. The easiest to understand is that you must show the balanced budget in both FY23 and 24. That means your expense total must match your revenue total. I'll explain, on, uh, explain the first one on the next slide, uh, but before I flip over there, you will need to check this EOE statement right here and have two people in the organization in these roles sign and date below. At a minimum, you must have your executive director sign the form. You can give it to us in electronic format or do a PDF scanned in form. But you must sign this before you attach it and, um, and turn it in. All right. So administrative and indirect expenses. The county will support administrative and or indirect community service grant program expenses at no more than 4% of direct program expenses. So when, I, when you saw the true false auto check in the Excel sheet, uh, that makes sure that the total Mecklenburg revenue will be less than or equal to 4% of the total direct costs. Direct program expenses include the following and must be itemized in expense reports. So anything that's directly related to the program that is being offered. Salaries, benefits, and fringe for direct program staff, direct client assistance, program supplies, materials, and equipment, any in-county travel mileage training incurred as a part of the program delivery. Administrative and indirect expenses include but are not limited to 
indirect and leadership personnel expenses, facility costs such as rent, maintenance, utilities, security, etc., software licenses and telecommunication charges, and fundraising or marketing. Uh, grantees do not have to itemize administrative and indirect expenses and may add 4% to itemize direct program expenses. Total payments will not exceed the grant amount. So uh, we had a lot of questions about this last year. It's, uh, it's not the easiest to think of, but I'm going to try. Uh, so you have uh, an example of the admin cost would be if you were requesting $100,000 in direct expenses, you can have up to four, $4,000 in indirect because $4,000 is 4% of $100,000. Your total request would be $104,000. And, and that amount must appear throughout your application and on the budget template, 104 total. Uh, I would say the easiest way to do this is to make your direct request amount and then calculate the 4% direct, uh, of indirect and add that to your direct, like I just explained. So your total request, like I said, would be 104,000. Um, if not, you might be playing the math juggling game like we did last year. So, <laughs> all right. So back to the program narrative, and I'll lead us kind of out. Um, you would just upload your completed version here, just like you did with the performance template. Uh, you would add three peer references at the bottom, right here. Mark as complete, and save and continue. So uh, this is the fourth form that you'll complete as the uh, project information section. You know you're still in project information section when you're on that check right there. Uh, you're required to self-select the goal area that you are most closely uh, fit under and also self-select the board priority that your program fits under as well. Um, the board priority is not required at this time, but please try to um, self-select if you can. If you have any questions, you can contact us and we can help you uh, figure out. Um, once you have selected one from each of those, you will mark as complete again and save and continue. Uh, the last page is where you can review or submit your application. But just so you know, once you submit, you will not have a chance to edit. So make sure everything is complete and filled in and attached before you hit submit. Um, Yep, yeah. you might be wondering where your application goes from here, and Gage is going to explain that to you. You like our transitions? <laughs> okay, hello again. Um, I will lead us out. So, a couple more things to note here. Once the application period closes, uh, then the county will begin its review. How we do that, um, a panel of county staff selected and categorized by their expertise in our different um, strategic goal areas, so that's where that's important, we'll review and discuss each application uh, using the weighted scales shown on the screen here. You'll see a couple of things. Uh, you'll see that the problem statement, service delivery strategy, and the budget proposal and narrative hold the greatest weights. Uh, this is because these sections of the application are the most relevant when it comes to telling the county um, exactly what service you would be funded, or what service you'll be providing if we choose uh, to move forward with funding. With that being said, please be sure to give us a clear picture of your program and what we would be funding um, as you complete these sections. Again, our application period opens today and will close on November the 13th, so you'll have about a month to complete your application. And then as 
Laura was explaining during the beginning of this presentation, uh, there are two applications. One is a CSG program, so this is for uh, new CSG um, applicants. And then there's a vendor program, and that is for Sunset applicants specifically. So not everyone who applies uh, will be accepted into the CSG program or as a CSG vendor. For those seeking other sources of funding, the following opportunities may be worth looking into. First is, the, first is the United Way. The United Way offers grants to local nonprofits through its Unite Charlotte program. This program is geared toward smaller operations with service strategies that focus on historically marginalized communities. And you can see their uh, eligibility criteria bulleted here. The application period for the Unite Charlotte program is in August of each year, but that is a recurring program. Additionally, the Arts and Sciences Council offers grants uh, for various cultural and creative-minded programs. The deadlines and eligibility for these grants vary, uh, so, if you're in it, so if you're interested in an Arts and Sciences Council grant, uh, please visit their webpage, which we have listed here. And just a note, this slideshow um, will be posted on our webpage after this session is over. So if uh, you have any questions about uh, where things are or what we went through, you can certainly go back and look at the presentation. So with that being said, we will conclude our information session. Um, and I'll have Lauren come up here if we're going to accept any quick questions at the end or if we're just yep. going to... We've got a, a microphone over here and a microphone over here, uh, and we are going to accept questions in this room, and then we will ask anyone in the other rooms to come over. Got a question here in the middle. It's kind of hard to weasel our way in the middle. One being for new programs, what kind of a, well, I guess across the board, what kind of a match are you looking for from other funding sources? So that's the first part of the question. And then the second part of the question is, um, I think a commonly asked question is, how big, you know, how big of a budget is typically accepted? And with other county grants, sometimes if your budget exceeds what they're able to fund, they might come back and say, would you accept a smaller grant? Is that the case here also? So there's kind of no justification for decreasing your amount. Yeah, so first question was uh, about how much they're, you're expecting from other sources. We don't expect any match amount, but we do like to see that you uh, show sustainability. So if you do have sources that provide funding for that program, um, that will show, to, show us a little bit about your sustainability. Uh, the second question was about, remind me. Um, so, so for example, if ideally 250,000 would be great, yes. um, and the overall proposal is liked, but you know, due to distribution of funds, it's like, oh, actually, we can only offer you 150. Are, will the committee come back and say, would you be willing to amend, amend your budget to yes. enter into the program, or you're just automatically out because you asked above what was feasible? Yes, you're right. So, uh, one part is if you go to our website, you can see what has been funded in the past year. You can see the range. It's a big difference in the dollar amount that has been um, approved this past year. Um, if there are certain things within the application that the review panel or the board of commissioners throughout the process likes or uh, would rather not fund, then we, we can come back to you and ask if your budget can be adjusted to accommodate those uh, changes. And especially with the admin costs last year, we had a little bit of, that was the first year, there was some confusion with that. So there was a little bit of um, back and forth on that one. So my question is pertaining to the budget. I just want to make sure that I understand. Our budget cycles on a calendar year. Mm -hmm. So by April, I think you said 14th, we should be able to share our 2023 budget with you? Yes. Yes. OK. okay. We have a question back here. Good morning. Good morning. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Patrick from Embrace Latino Voices. My question is related to the uh, financial audit with the CPA. For new and grassroots organizations, the cost of a CPA is a uh, burden for us. So is there any flexibility from a certified uh, accounting or anything like that? Or only the CPA will be accepted? Thank you. So unfortunately, uh, we only accept a CPA audited document. Um, and that is a requirement by the county. Um, we are working with taxpayer money to fund these, so um, we have to check through all, um, all of your financial documents. Um, that's why we recommend the Unite Charlotte grant and other things. We, we actually give money to other organizations that are able to do those things. So check into the, the other ones as well. Hi, um, I'm Braylon. My question is for the audit that will be due by April 1st, 2024, what will be the process for that of turning that in? I'm glad you asked. Uh, so on our website, we have a new submission portal. Um, and if you have any, if you're here today and you filled out um, our sign-in sheet, you will be added to our distribution list and receive materials from now on. But if you have other coworkers that want to be added, you can fill out a submission form on that to add email. Um, if you are selected as a CSG, you would submit your quarterly documents on there. And then there's also a third option for submitting your audit. We also accept it at this general grants at mecnc.gov, but we like to have a record of it. So if you can submit it through that uh, portal, that would be the best option. Over here. I just wanted to get clarity on the 4% of the grant. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that 4% of what you give will only cover ad, um, indirect expenses or it's only going to cover 4% of our total indirect expenses? You So you can only receive 4% of the amount that you are asking from us for the audit. You can get more than 4% from a Other different funder, funder, but just 4% from us. Okay. Uh, thank you. My name is Rocio Gonzalez. Um, you mentioned that you're going to provide us with the presentation. Um, will you also provide us with the um, CSG performance template and the budget template so that we can review it, or do we have to exactly. set up an we, account we to have access to that. As well. That yeah. would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my question is relative to the um, allocation of funding. So will the funds be allocated on a reimbursement basis? That's the first part of the question. And if it is, can you explain that? And the second part is, will there be funding allocated prior to, to get you started rather than just on reimbursement? No, uh, we are only on a re reimbursement basis. So uh, we accept quarterly documents from the accepted CSGs. Uh, so the 15th after the end of each quarter is the deadline. They submit an invoice, an expense report, and a performance template, and then we send them a check. After they've spent, after they've spent it, yes. then you will reimburse them. Yes. So my second question part was, will there be upfront money to fuel their budgets for the spending part? There will not be any okay. upfront money. I just, I just thought that needed to have been said. Okay. Thank you. What are the percentages or number of new applicants versus your sunset applicants you will be receiving? So the sunset applicants go through a different process, and I believe there are five that are eligible to be vendors this year. Um, they're not competing with you all, so um, those five will move on to a different process, a different pro program, kind of. Um, and then you all will be competing against each other in the um, how many applicants. Um, it, so every year is different. Um, it just depends on the applicant pool. 
and the amount of funding no funding is guaranteed so um, if unfortunately we have a bad year we could be cut in half and just not you know not be able to present that information ahead of time but um, this last year we had 16 programs um, accepted and there was 2.1 million that's that right 2.1 million. million the year before was 1.8 million so we don't necessarily use that as a starting point but you can imagine that it would be right around that if we received ARPA funding will that impact our chances of receiving this grant so it does not it, it's not a a definite no but it is considered as part of the of the review process good morning um, so my question if your program sunsets I think you mentioned that with the if you're applying as a vendor then what you're applying for has to be different than the sunset program no you're if you're applying as a vendor your vendor application has to be the same program that you've had in the program for the past three years it's just that you, if you have a different if program, you have a different program you'd like to apply with you can submit a CSG application so you would be submitting two different applications thank you mm -hmm. I have several questions actually okay um, for the peer references you just need names and numbers right you don't need a yep. letter okay. yes um, and then can you talk more about what substantially different is so an example, uh, um, as a contracted grant writer, I had a previous applicant who had a continuum of programs and created one at the beginning of that continuum um, and didn't get the grant. So I was just curious if you could say more about substantially different. Yeah, so I would say if the, uh, if the organization submits uh, an application for a program that has changed uh, to a subset of the population that it mm -hmm. used to serve or okay. slightly increase of the population that it used to serve or um, different location though it's basically the same program but mm -hmm. you're just doing something a little bit different that's yeah. not substantially different if it is a completely different program and uh, okay um, if it's a complete so this would be for a subset of participants that don't aren't ready for the next program in the continuum. So it's preparing them. So it's different, but it is along the same continuum or purpose. Would that that's not substantially different enough? I'm just curious. Um, I think it would be up to you if you yeah. want to okay. apply it that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, just but an you example. you could fight your argument in the. Yeah. text box <laughs> okay. if, you, if you're able to show that it's substantially different because mm -hmm. it is a, a, a progression from the other one yeah. then yeah okay can I just I have two more questions we have another Should question I? over here yeah, yeah. and then we can come back That's to fine. you if you do have a question that is specific to your own grant we're happy to answer that question after the meeting or to just talk you through it because it may be a case-by-case -case basis Thank you. Just a little more clarification on the ARPA situation. Uh -huh. yeah. One is um, if you, the program that you're applying for is not funded by ARPA, would that make a difference? So our organization may have received ARPA, but if there's a different program. So, so just to be clear, if you received ARPA, your organization or your program, that is not a definite determinant for whether you re, you will receive CSG funding it is a consideration but it is not a definite could you define consideration so <laughs> so I, along the al along the process uh, we have okay so let's say you are competing with another organization you both do the exact same thing you both have really great applications you received one million dollars in ARPA funding and they didn't that might be a case where let's give them an opportunity because they haven't been funded does that make sense okay it, it's you're not eliminated no 
Yes. Yes. And one thing I'd add to that, I think that Lauren mentioned, the CSG program, it is different from the ARPA program. It is funded with county dollars. These are our tax dollars, property tax dollars. And um, the CSG program, we had a $2.1 million budget uh, for 2024, which is part of our overall budget, which also goes to fund things like teacher supplements, public health, social services. So it is part of that overall process. So it is different from ARPA. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I just want you to clarify a little bit. You said history was very important about a program, right? One of the two of you said that. However, you mentioned the history of the pro pro program history is very important. But then you talked about, um, so that will be for expansion, but then you also talked about new programs. So how, if you could elaborate a little bit on if this is a pilot that is going to be implemented, or if it's a new program um, within a whole new endeavor. H how does that work? So it's another one of those things that's considered. Um, a uh, pilot program is not usually prioritized in the CSG program. Um, if you do apply and you have a unique situation, um, there is a chance that you could, if you're, if you're doing something in, an, in a completely different, amazing way, there is a chance that your application could make it through. Um, but I would say generally pilot programs, we like to see a proven history of success before we give money to a program. So we're looking at expansion then of a program. It might be yep. a different way of mm -hmm. doing something that is already being mm -hmm. deployed. Yep, like uh, serving additional, uh, additional clients, uh, expanding your reach to a different region of the Mecklenburg area, um, adding, adding a certain service onto what you usually do as a part of that program. Great, thank you. I was wondering, um, you all mentioned a review panel. Um, yes. Who does, I mean, who's going to sit on that panel? Is it going to be fellow community members? Will it be Mecklenburg County employees? Can you tell us a little bit more about the panel? Yeah, our, our review panel is made up of uh, employees from different uh, departments all over the county uh, within different expertise areas uh, that line up with the focus areas that Gage went over. Um, so uh, we try to match up reviewers with certain applications where, uh, for instance, if someone is from veteran services, they would probably be the per best person to review an application for a program about veterans. Um, so it is uh, matched based on expertise. I have two quick questions. One is um, slightly different than the ARPA question, but is there any negative if there's city money that's already been? No. Okay. We're two different okay. entities. Just, yeah. Okay. So. And then the second question was piggybacking on the pilot question. Um, if that program starts in FY24, but is like actively starting right now, you, when you said year to date, I was a little confused. Is, are we projecting what we will finish with FY24 numbers, or is it year to date? Your year to date would be what you have accumulated to this right day. now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if so, there is there anywhere to put projected for FY24 or no? Do you want projected? No, for fiscal year 24, what we're asking is basically at the point in time that you're right. completing the application, what is your service? Okay. Um, so for the fiscal year 25, you can kind of take that projection of what you think you're gonna do in fiscal year 24, and then use that as a baseline to tell us what your targets would be in fiscal year 25. Okay, thank you. Okay, 
last question, I promise. Okay. Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, so I work with a lot of small nonprofits, and they run on a calendar year often. So helping them understand the fiscal year difference and the data that they don't collect on an, they collect it, you know, plus budget information too, mm -hmm. they collect it on a calendar year. Would you recommend for an organization like that to contact you to get assistance with that kind of issue? If you can convert your information easily from calendar year to fiscal year, do so. Okay. If it's more muddy than you'd like or than we'd like, just write on your application in your narrative section that this is all on a calendar year basis and we will take that into consideration as well. Okay. I, I've okay spent a lot you? of okay. time with small nonprofits uh, yeah, on that and they don't have the money to pay me to do that. So yeah. that's why I'm asking. Yes. That might be it. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, this is maybe more of a general question, but could you please give us uh, a few examples for what is, uh, what would qualify under health community and uh, connected community and safe community and economic opportunities? Okay. Um, Do you want me to answer? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, <sighs> We categorize uh, applicants into these categories. We just ask that you generally think about how your program would fit into those. It's, it's not a definite, like, this program is definitely a connected community, this program is not. Um, but for some examples, um, for the healthy community, we have funded programs like Communo Community Development who have provided behavioral health services. Um, for safe community, I'm gonna call out Malik, if he's still in here, he may be in an overflow room. Uh, but youth advocate programs, that's an example of um, an organization that's been categorized into safe communities because they uh, work with at-risk youth to keep them out of the justice system. Um, so we just ask you to generally think about how you would fit into there and then fix yourself. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you can ask me specific questions later. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Anybody else in here have a question before we move to the overflow room? Lauren, we've been checking with the overflow okay. room. There aren't any questions, but if you all can hear us uh, and you have questions, uh, step over and we'll try to answer those. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Well, we are up front. You can contact contact us at any time through our emails or through the general grants email, um, and we will send this information out to you all. Thank you so much.